the Australian Government Summer School for Teachers of Mathematics conducted at the University of New England in Armidale, New South Wales in January 2008 has seen a large number of presenters t delivering keynote addresses to a group of 200 teachers of mathematics from right around Australia. Professor Doug Clark is the Professor of Mathematics Education at the Australian Catholic University, Victoria. Doug has presented two keynote addresses to the school and this interview we're going to cover the, the presentation on assessment for learning in primary mathematics. Doug, I was just wondering if you could tell us what was the main focus of the presentation that you made. We focused on assessment as you've said in, in primary education and the, the major focus was looking at why we assess and having, having established the, all the different reasons why we assess and teachers will say I assess because the principal expects me to, the system expects me to, that's what you do in mathematics but we, we come down to the fact that our major purpose in assessment in my opinion should be to inform our teaching and to enhance students learning and so with that as a starting point we then look at a whole variety of different ways of assessing students mm -hmm. in a way that can really tell us something that's that's meaningful about their understanding. So the focus, it, it's uh, we, we've got a mixture uh, of a keynote presentation but largely a workshop where teachers are looking mm -hmm. at possible assessment tasks, talking about what might we learn about students from this, looking at samples of students' work because one of the really important conversations that, that I need to have with teachers and teachers need to have with their students is what is it that defines quality work? Because sometimes teachers don't actually communicate to students what they're looking for, mm. except at the end where they say, well, that wasn't what I wanted. Right. And so it's important that we think about showing students the kind of work that we would expect on a, on a given assessment task and talking about what is it that makes this piece of work high quality and this less so. So what would be the, the key ideas and messages that you would hope to present to participants at the summer okay. school? Okay, well, one of the messages that I would be communicating is that I think we need to move from a teach it then test it, teach it then test it mm -hmm. approach to assessment. Uh, one secondary teacher said to me one time, uh, I give a test at the end, it's sort of an official announcement that the topic is over. Mm. And what actually happens in many cases is we give a test and the test is used for no purpose other than to sort students into groups or to assign a grade. Um, so this notion of I teach a topic, then I quickly test it before they've forgotten the, the material, yeah. then I move on to something else. I don't actually make use of what I've done. So a lot of what I've been working on is rich assessment tasks which are used during a particular topic and the teacher makes use of what's learned along the way and also hopefully the students learn something from doing the task. So one of the things that, that I will outline, having asked the t teachers on a number of occasions over many years, what are the features of a rich assessment task, mm -hmm. I've got about 15 different things that I think can be used as a criteria for whether an assessment task is rich, all from teachers and to help teachers to say, okay, as I'm developing a task that I might use with my students, these provide a kind of a criteria. So do they connect with what's being taught? Because often students feel like an assessment task has nothing to do with what they've actually yes. been doing in the class. Yeah. Um, does the assessment task draw on a range of outcomes, not just a single outcome in mathematics? So a series of things like this, and then we'll look at a range of, a range of those. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested, would the use of these rich assessment tasks be a, a, assistance in motivating the students as well? Well, well I, I think it's tied to my other presentation about challenging engaging students. I try to develop tasks that have both content and a context that will be of interest to students. So just to give you an example of a task that, uh, that I talked about in the session, um, downloading songs from the internet is mm. a great, of great interest to middle school students. Yeah. Now there are legal ways and illegal ways <laughs> but we're, we focus on the ways where you buy a card and you mm -hmm. can download. So I've got an assessment task where students are presented with a choice between two cards. Imagine on this card 
you get 16 songs for $20 and on this card you get 20 songs for $24. For example, I, I think I've got the figures incorrect there. But the students have to think about, okay, which card would give me greater value and how do I know? So I'm trying to take a context that's of interest to students. That's a wonderfully revealing task of students understanding of proportional reasoning. Mm. Um, the students who will say things like, well, for this particular card, the average cost of songs is more than a dollar, and for this card I get four more songs for four more dollars, so this card must be better value because it reduces the average. That's the kind of thinking. Whereas other students will say, at a very low level of response, this one is worth more because you get more songs, but they're not thinking of value. So it really does provide insights into students' understanding. Yeah. So teachers who are undertaking a summer school, what mm. sort of ideas might they actually take back into their classroom? apply in that context. Okay. Well I, I'm hoping that they will take a number of the tasks that I share mm -hmm. but I also present tasks as models of assessment tasks. So for example we have a task called Helping Bert Do Division which presents a particular student's work and the students have to play the role of teacher. What is the difficulty that Bert's having mm -hmm. with division? What advice would you give to Bert? What kinds of problems do you think Bert can do? Which are the ones that he can't do? Right. And so in advising BERT, they're actually really focusing on the concept. So I'm saying to teachers, that's just division and that's grade five and six. You could take that idea and you could pick another common misconception that students yeah. have and build a sample of students' work from that and get the students to, to critique that student's yes. work. So it, it provides a model. So I'm hoping a lot of the things we do provide a model for teachers. Yeah when they go back and work with colleagues. Right. Well, I'm sure my maths learning would have been much better had I had a teacher using those sort of um, practices. I just wonder, in finishing, whether you might be able to indicate how participants at the summer school and people looking at this video may be able to get resources which would help them in this area. Yes, well, um, I think my email address is is uh, available to them on the, will yes, be on the we'll website and available. available to participants. And certainly I put together a large collection of tasks for the New South Wales Education Department a number of years ago and they are very happy for me to email those at no right. cost to teachers. They were particularly for Year 10, but lots of teachers have used them at Years 8, 9 and 10, so that's one possibility. And also there's a publication at AAMT called Assessment for Learning which has about 35 other tasks and that right. would be a good way of of both uh, looking at the task but also we provided sample scoring rubrics that yes, teachers could yeah. use and samples of work at different levels of quality. Right. Oh that's great. I'm sure yeah. there'll be plenty for people to follow up on. So Doug, thank you very much for your time today. That's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.